So what you're looking at here is collagen fibers extracted extracted from the ribs of what is supposedly a 75 million year old dinosaur bone. If you're asking how that's possible, it's not. If that's the correct age, which it's not. This here also, different, completely different lab, completely different everything. That's a Tyrannosaurus rex skeleton, apparently. And you can see on the lower right, they extracted blood cells from inside of it. Soft tissue, blood cells, the whole deal. Again, <laughs> if it were possible for that to last 75 million years, I'll eat my hat, and I'm not even wearing a hat. This is Mark Armitage. And he has a degree in biology, he was running his own lab at a university, until he happened to stumble across the same thing. He was analyzing some dinosaur bones and found soft tissue, blood cells, the whole schmeal. And he was fired for preaching creationist beliefs, even though his paper that he published had nothing to do with promoting it that. All he was doing was releasing the findings of what he found, but you can't do that if you're going against organized dogma. So he was fired. But well, getting back to this one, the collagen and the red blood cells they pulled out of these bones. This is just reported a couple days ago. So researchers from Imperial College in London analyzed eight rather shabby fossils that had been dug up in Canada a century ago before finding their way to a museum in London. So these were dug up 100 years ago. They're shabby fossils. They're not anything museum quality that they're going to display. They were stored, whatever, in a box, no big deal. And they still have these collagen fibers and red blood cells. So they're not impeccably preserved underground or above ground. And this is still there. They haven't searched for DNA yet. I'm guessing they're not going to because they don't want to find it. But there you go. So they studied a claw from a meat-eating theropod, perhaps a gorgosaurus. They don't even know what it is because it was just a random bone. Some limb and ankle bones from a duck-billed dinosaur and a toe bone from a Triceratops-like animal. So yeah, they found red blood cells, collagen, soft tissue, all this stuff that they didn't expect to be in a bone, or in bones that they assume are 75 million years old. And again, I love the way they do this. They assume it's 75 million years old because that's the layer of strata that it was found in. But they also, because you can't date anything like carbon dated or otherwise, anything over like 50,000 years just doesn't work. So they figure it's 75 million years old because of the stuff found in the layer. Right? So they date the stuff in the layer based on the layer. And then they date the layer based on the stuff they find in there. Anyone else see a problem with that circular logic? Because I sure do. So in reality, they have no idea how old this stuff is. They're just putting a number on it based on what layer it's in. But again, that means nothing because they're dating the layer based on the stuff that's in there. So, again, they found this stuff by accident using an electron mic microscope on the bones and they saw what turned out to be blood. And they said, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way that this is real. It has to be some chemical contamination, maybe a person digging it up or something, cut themselves and bled onto it. But no, apparently, and I learned something new from this article, apparently... Mammals are unusual among vertebrates in having red blood cells that lack a nucleus. So mammals do not have a nucleus inside their red blood cells. So if the fossilized blood cells that they found had a nucleus, they couldn't be human. And of course, obviously, they did. So it ruled out contamination from a mammal bleeding on the sample. Um, and again, they, they say the... They say that it may well be that this type of tissue is preserved far more commonly than we thought. It might even be the norm, but we have to research more. No one's looked for it because no one assumed that it could be there because they're supposed to be so old. So nobody even bothered looking. And now that they found it, they're like, oh, I don't know. we gotta got to do some research. <laughs> yeah, because you guys are completely wrong about the age and the whole timeline of this planet. Um, and then they go into, like, if we do find DNA, we can resurrect the beasts, you know, Jurassic Park style. I don't think it's a coincidence the movie's coming out, that the story's coming out. Um, he said, we've never found any genetic material in our fossils, but generally in science, it's unwise to say never. 
It opens up the possibility of loads of specimens that may have soft tissue preserved in them, um, but finding intact DNA is another issue altogether. But again, they never looked, so it's probably there. All right, and then finally, I'll leave you with this. Um, on the left is, let me get his name right, Bob Enyart from Real Science Radio, KGOV.com. And on the right is Jack Horner, paleontologist and technical advisor to Jurassic Park. Obviously, his money comes from the standard science evolution type people. So this is a recorded radio interview. This is from an upcoming documentary, Jurassic, by uh, Trey Smith. I don't know if some of you have heard of Trey Smith. Those of you that have probably have strong opinions one way or another on him. I'm kind of in between on it. I think that he does excellent research. Some of his conclusions, I don't know if I fully agree with. But again, I'm not doing the amount of research he is on it. And the way he presents his data is kind of like OCD on crack. So it, it rubs some people the wrong way, but it doesn't mean his information is invalid. And so this is a recorded phone call between creationists on the left and paleontologist Jurassic Park advisor on the right. And I'll just leave you with this for the rest of the video. No comment. I'm not going to comment on it. It speaks for itself. And I'll put links to all the stuff that I have here. Oh, and I realize I should set it up. There's more in the actual Trey Smith video, but I just cut this one part out. So they're offering to do a... Uh, the creationist group is offering to do a carbon-14 analysis of some soft tissue that was found in a bone housed in a university that's affiliated with Jack Horner. So they're offering $10,000 to the university plus to pay for all the fees associated with the test. And Horner is very careful in choosing his words throughout the entire conversation that has been released. You know, he's not trying to seem like he's stonewalling, but he's really stonewalling, you know, because he doesn't want the test done because he knows the numbers aren't going to agree with what his group, you know, what evolutionists say is the truth. So he's not going to let them do the test one way or another, and he keeps trying to convince the creationist guy we're not going to do it, and then finally, this is the, this is the exchange. Because carbon-14 doesn't work on something like this, right? your results that you get can be all over the place. Well, they should be infinity. It should be not datable. In other words, it shouldn't come back saying it's 25,000 years old. It should be infinity. Um, let, let me let me tell you where I'm coming from here. Sure. All right. Obviously, your group is a group of creationists. Yes. And and um, and the spin they can get off of it. Right. Doing it. Well, not going to help. Not going to help us. Yeah. So even though it's just a scientific test, they're they're not well, asking it's, for it's food. Not a, it's not actually a scientific test. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Carbon fourteen dating something with soft tissue in it. 